What's up guys, Casey Ferris here. Thanks for checking out another video of mine here on the YouTube. Today, we're talking about workflow inside DaVinci Resolve 16. This is like a 30,000 foot view of basically how you would make a video inside of the app. This is great for anybody who maybe just isn't very familiar with Resolve or maybe gets confused with like, why are there so many pages? Why are there so many different parts of the app? What part of the app do I use for what thing? I'm gonna try and give you the most simple explanation I can so that you can kind of get rolling as fast as you can. That being said, I'm not gonna go over every single little thing. This is kind of a big overview. Let's jump into it. When you open up Resolve, the first thing you'll see is the project manager. That's this window right here. This is where you open, save, export, make new projects, that kind of thing. Best thing to do here is just hit new project and call it something. I'll call this coffee and it'll think for a second and open up a blank project. If you're gonna be editing a video, the very first thing that you want to do is start importing media so that you can actually start working with it. You can do this in just about any part of Resolve and all the different parts of Resolve are down here in this button bar. This is kind of like a, a way to organize the layout or the jobs of the program. So you do your video editing in the cut or edit page. You do effects and graphics in fusion, color correction in color, audio in fairlight, deliver is where you render out a project and media is where you manage media. So if we wanna import some media, this is a great place to start. I'll just click on that and it'll switch out my interface to look like this. This is a really powerful page. You can do all kinds of things with organizing, naming clips, putting things in folders, and just getting really detailed with all of the information about your clips. You can just be as OCD as you want. <laughs> That's for another video. I'm gonna show you how to just get media into your app. In the upper left-hand corner here, we have something called media storage. That's this whole panel right here. If you click here, you can go through different parts of your computer, different hard drives, different folders, and just navigate to the media that you want to use in your project. Now, this is just looking at video files that are on your computer. They're not actually in the project yet. They're not imported. So to bring them in, all I have to do is just select them and drag them down here to the bottom part, which is called the media pool. The media pool is where all of your media for your project actually lives. So anything that you import, whether it's audio, video, pictures, anything that lives there, that's like your bucket of stuff. Now let's actually do something with it. To do that, we're gonna have to go to a different page. And it's really your choice, whether you wanna use the cut page or the edit page. Really quickly, the cut page is kind of a slimmed down, streamlined version of editing. This is great if you have a really simple edit where you aren't working with a lot of layers or a lot of audio. Something like a vlog is a great thing to edit in the cut page. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just grab a piece of media by double clicking on it. That's gonna pop up here in our viewer and we can scrub through it and take a look. And when we want to add it to our timeline, we can just grab it and drag it down and that'll add it to our timeline. Now, if we hit the space bar, that'll play back. And this is what the viewer is actually going to see. So if you were to export this project right now, they would see this guy pouring the coffee and that's it. If I wanna add more shots, all I have to do is go up here to our media pool and find a shot I like. I'll double click and I can grab that and I can either drag that to the timeline or I can use these fancy buttons right here, which will put that clip into the timeline in several different ways. One of my favorites is this second one called Append. So I'll click on that and that'll just add that coffee clip right after the clip that I already had in my timeline. Let's say I wanna take just a part of the clip, double click on any clip, and I'll make a new beginning and end of this clip. Those are called in and out. Maybe I want this to start here. I'll hit I on the keyboard for in and I'll move over here. Maybe this is good. I'll hit O for out. Now I've made a shorter clip and I can put that into the timeline wherever I want. Again, I can use my fancy buttons over here. I can also just drag it down and build our timeline like that. If I want to adjust clips here in the timeline, I can just grab them and move them back and forth. If I mouse over the middle, there's this little white icon that lets me slip this clip and pick a different section with the same ins and outs. I can also grab the edges and make a clip shorter or longer. And if I do this to the beginning of a clip that is halfway through the timeline, it just kind of moves it down so that it's shorter and there aren't any gaps. Something that's unique to the cut page is down here we have kind of our zoomed in view of our timeline. And then up here in the middle, we have the zoomed out timeline. This is really convenient if you want to jump around in a really long project if I wanna jump towards the end, I can just click towards the end here. If I wanna jump all the way to the beginning of the project, I can just click towards the beginning here. And then I can get really detailed with this kind of zoomed in timeline down below. So the cut page is for assembling edits really quickly. If they're a simple enough edit, you can do everything in the cut page. Again, there's a bunch of stuff that we aren't going over, but that's basically what it's for. Now, let's say we wanna get a little more detailed. Maybe we wanna add some audio, maybe do some more detailed edits. That's a good thing to do in the edit page. 
Now, anytime I switch to a different page, it's gonna take the same timeline that I've made and it's just gonna open it up in kind of a new mode, right? So if I click on edit, that opens that exact same timeline that I've been working on. It's just in the edit page. This is the page that's a lot like an NLE that you might be used to if you're familiar with video editing. It looks a lot like Premiere or Final Cut or Sony Vegas. And if you're familiar with any of those programs, it'll be really familiar. It works pretty much the same way. So I'll grab this and bring it up a little bit. We have our video tracks here. We also have audio tracks down here. In the cut page, you can work with audio. It's always connected to the video. So if you're adding any kind of really fancy audio, I find it's a lot easier to do that in the edit page. We wanna add a voiceover to our edit. That's something I usually do in the edit page. So here's how to do that. I'm gonna import my voiceover, but this time, instead of going to my media page, I'm just gonna drag it from an explorer window. I have my coffee VO. I'll just drag that into my media pool right here. Again, this is going to live in the project now. I'll just close my explorer window. And if I double click on coffee VO, that'll bring it up here in the left viewer. Again, this is a workflow video. You can set your ins and outs here. I think it's really awkward to do that. What I like to do is just grab the whole VO and drag it down to the timeline like this. Then I can make this track a little bigger. I can adjust the volume and I can go through and start editing my VO and start just putting it right under where I want. Now, I wanna show you a secret for editing voiceover that I use all the time. This makes it go so much faster. Let's say I have my voiceover here and I wanna cut out all of this silence. I want to make this a nice, concise edit. What I could do is go up to my tools here and, and make cuts and cut all of this out, select my pointer and hit delete on the keyboard. That's a good way to do it. You could totally do it that way. But what I like to do is edit this just like it were a piece of video. The problem is we don't have any video for this VO. So what I like to do is go up here to the effects library, which is right behind the media pool. And down here in the effects, I'll click on generators and I'll just grab this solid color and drag that into my timeline. And I'll just make that the same length as my VO. Then I can select these both, right click and say link clips. Now this pretty much acts like it's footage, but it's just black. The way the edit page edits audio is kind of weird. If audio and video are linked, you can use this really quick technique that I'm about to show you. If they're not, then it just kind of acts weird and it doesn't really work the same way. So this is just kind of a quick workaround to make this work. What I like to do is play through my audio and I can scrub back and forth and I can pretty much see this on the waveform where I want to cut this and what sections I want to delete. I can use my keyboard shortcuts to make some quick edits here. If I hit control backslash, that'll cut this clip under the playhead. Then I can go to my, the other side of my audio, control backslash. And then here, instead of hitting control backslash, I'm gonna do another shortcut. It's control shift left bracket. And what that does is make a cut and delete the beginning of the clip all the way up to that other cut. So I can quickly play through this, pause control backslash and position that playhead control shift left bracket and cut my VO that way. Can even skip ahead here, control shift left bracket and make a really quick edit. And then I have my cut up VO. Then if I want to, I could delete this solid and just use the audio, but there's no real harm in just moving the video up and bringing this under like that. And same thing, if I want to add music, I would import it in here, drag the music down and set my levels accordingly. So that's pretty much the editing workflow. It's importing media, bringing it into a timeline. You can select your clips and put them all together in the cut page, maybe get a little more detailed in the edit page. But once you have your edit built, there's a few really cool things in Resolve that'll help put some polish on your video. So I've opened a different project where I have sort of a decent edit going, and I'll show you some of the cool things that Resolve can do. The first thing is maybe we want to add a title to this. If we look at this first clip, maybe we want to have a title here that says coffee shop. Pretty easy to do. If we go over to our effects panel under titles, we can just drag a text title over onto the timeline. That'll show up here. Anytime we want to adjust something that we have selected in the timeline in any of these pages, that happens in the inspector, which lives up here in the upper right-hand corner. Click on that, that'll open up the inspector panel. Then you can adjust the text and position it how you like. Super easy way to add a basic title. A lot of the time this works great. Now we have coffee shop, yay. But let's say that we want this to move along with the camera since it's kind of, this camera's kind of moving. Let's say we want to kind of stick it to this wall. Well, that's something that will happen in Fusion. Again, this isn't going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial, but just a overview of how you would do things, what you use every part of Resolve for. I do have a whole bunch of tutorials on the Fusion page if you want to check those out. I'll probably just delete this text 
And with my playhead over that clip in the timeline, I'll just click on the Fusion page down here, and that'll open up that clip in the Fusion page. If you're not familiar with Fusion, this probably looks really complicated, but pretty much you can build fancy things with little recipes down here called nodes. These are just the building blocks for whatever you're trying to make. Right now, we just have two ingredients to this little recipe here. The first one is media in, which is just the clip that we have selected, and media out, which is what it will look like when Fusion is all done. In between is where the magic happens. So what I'll do is grab one of these icons from this toolbar here. The third one over is a T, and that's a text node. And I can hook this up in a certain way. It will put text over my video, just like we had before. And again, I can adjust everything about it in the inspector. But we're also going to track this footage. So I'll grab an effect from our effects library here, tools, under tracking, I'll just grab tracker and bring it down here. And I can hook my original footage into this tracker node, and I can use the tools to track the motion of the footage. Then I can put my text on that tracker, set this operation to match move, and it'll put that text over my footage. And now we have that tracked to the motion of the footage. Of course, we can adjust it as we want. Now we have kind of a fancy title. So that's something that you would build inside of Fusion. And the cool thing is that when I'm done with this, all I have to do is go back to my edit page and there it is in my timeline. Pretty slick. Now let's say we love our edit, but we want to adjust the colors, make sure all the shots look as nice as possible. That happens in the color page. So again, I'm just going to open this exact same timeline here in the color page, just by clicking the color button right here. I've already done quite a bit of color work on this timeline, but it will open up in this color interface. And whatever shot I have selected here in these thumbnails, that's the one that I'm adjusting with the tools down here. So if I want to make this shot warmer, I can just use the tools to push those colors towards warm, and that just affects that one shot. Now, again, each one of these tools is something that you're going to want to take time and learn, but this is where the color stuff happens. So let's take a look at our first shot. I can even bring up my color scopes by clicking this little middle button right here. And that'll show a graph of all of the colors in my image. And I can use my color wheels to adjust the darkest parts of the image and make them darker with this little wheel down here. Make the brighter parts of the image brighter with this little wheel under gain. And as I push to the right, we can see the image gets brighter here in the highlights. I can add some saturation just by rolling up on my saturation here. Now we have a much better looking image. I can quickly turn my color grade on or off using this little rainbow button right here. Now we can see that difference. Now you may be saying, well, I don't want to color grade this graphic that I just put on top of this footage. If it's something like white text, it probably doesn't matter, honestly. But if it is something that's more complicated, you're gonna to want to build that as its own thing inside of Fusion. So it would look something like this. So if I wanted to quickly fix this, which happens quite a bit, what I'll do is hold Alt and drag this kind of over, just kind of out of the way so I have a copy of it. What I'll do is right click on this footage and go down to reset fusion composition. It's gonna ask me if I wanna reset it, I'll hit reset. That's gonna make this just the normal footage without anything happening in fusion. And I'll grab my fusion comp right here, which has everything including the footage on it. And I'll just go back into fusion. But instead of that footage, maybe I'll grab a background node, drag that down and delete my media in and my merge and just connect my background to my tracker. What that's gonna do is just put this text on black and I can select my background node, go up to my inspector and just bring this alpha down. So now I just have this same tracked title, but it's on top of nothing. So I pretty much just separated the layers here. I have my coffee shop title and my footage, but they're separate. Now when I go back to color, they're separate here. And even if I go crazy and make this just an insane blue, it doesn't affect that title that's over it. Other than that, in the color page, it's pretty much going through each shot and making sure it looks good and that it matches with the other shots, which again is its own thing, but this is where it happens. The last major page is the Fairlight page. Just click on Fairlight. This is where all of your audio stuff happens. If you're familiar with any kind of audio app, this will make a ton of sense. You have your timeline here. Again, this is the exact same timeline that we've been working on. You can even bring up your video tracks just for reference if you want to. Go up to this button right here, Timeline View Options. And this first icon says Video Tracks. That'll bring up our video tracks so that it makes a little more sense in context. This is the page where I will do my more detailed audio mixing. Things like adding filters, adjusting levels, that kind of thing. One thing I like to do is on my first track, my VO track, you can double click on the mixer strip here on this little square right by Dynamics. And that'll bring up a whole bunch of plugins that are really awesome for making your audio sound good. I'll usually put on a compressor, bring up the ratio a little bit, bring up the makeup. That just makes sure that my VO is loud enough and the loud and quiet parts come through at a similar level. 
You can do a bunch of fancy things. Again, we're not going to get into the weeds, but this is something that I do on pretty much everything is, is some version of this. And finally, when you have your timeline looking and sounding exactly how you want, you can go to your last page, which is deliver. And that again, will switch out all of your interface and you can set your render settings to actually export your project. In the upper left-hand corner here are the render settings and almost everything that I do is going to go on YouTube. And so if you know all of your video settings and everything, you can set them yourself. But what I like to do is just click on the YouTube preset and then click back to custom. What that does is set everything here in the custom panel to the YouTube settings. But when I switch back to custom, I can adjust things. The only thing I ever really adjust is this quality right here where it says restrict to 10,000 kilobits. I'll usually make that about 30,000. And that's pretty much all I do other than naming the file and picking a place for it to go. Then you can hit add to render queue. And what that'll do is put this job here. This is where you can stack multiple different kinds of settings. So if you wanted to make just an audio version, you could click on audio only under the audio page, you know, select wave, hit add to render queue. And that's going to stack those different kinds of exports. And you can just drag select them. And if they're selected and you hit start render, that's going to render out your project and it goes really fast. And it's going to do both of those jobs while you walk away. And that's pretty much it. So there you go. That's a 30,000 foot view of the general workflow of how to make something in Resolve. You pretty much just get your pieces together, put them in a timeline. You can do a lot in the edit and cut pages. If you want to get really fancy, you can go into fusion. Color happens in the color page. Detailed audio happens in Fairlight. And to render things out, you go to the deliver page. So for anybody who is confused about all of that, I hope this is helpful. If you want a little more detail on just the features of Resolve and the power and what it can do, you can have a drink from the fire hydrant with this video. That's the crash course video for Resolve. It'll walk you through each of these pages and get a little bit more detailed while still keeping to the basic need to know stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe. My name again is Casey Ferris. Thanks for watching.